Hey guys, in this video lecture, I'm going to show you the tools that you need to know for retapologizing. If this is your first time retapologizing in 3ds Max, I suggest that you follow me step by step. Go to Create tab, go to Sphere, click and drag onto the grid. Right click to exit. Go to the Move tool and let's set the XYZ to 0, 0. You could do that by entering 0 for each of those coordinates or you could right click on the arrow to set it to 0. Press F4 on the keyboard. As you can see, we could see the wireframe there, the wires, the edges. Go to the Modify tab. We need to set the segments to a high value. So crank it all the way up. So let's set it to around 100. Okay, so let's say this is going to be our super high-res mesh, and this cannot be taken into the game engine, so we're going to have to retopologize this, create a low-poly version of this. So how do we do that? Go to Create tab. We're going to first create a plane to begin with. We need a geometry to start with. Go to Plane, turn on Auto Grid. This Auto Grid will allow us to create on the surface. Okay, so click and drag onto the sphere somewhere in the middle and right click the exit. So this has too many segments. Let's go ahead and get rid of those segments. Go to modify tab and the length seg, width seg, let's just go ahead and set it to 1. So this is going to be a low poly mesh. So we need to start out as low poly as possible because this is going to be make it, make it easier for us to manipulate if we are starting with a low poly. Right click, convert to editable poly. Okay, now you guys need to go to the freeform tab here and you should see the tools there. The tools that we're gonna be using are gonna be around this area here. So within this area, the tools are we're gonna be using from the freeform. Now, if you see that the tools are not there and maybe they are hiding, you could click on maximize panel here this arrow right there. Okay, make sure that they are showing up the entire time there. Okay, now the tool that I want to show you first is going to be this here because um, we want to conform the plane. We want it to stick onto our sphere. So how do we make it do that when we are manipulating this? You see where it says grid? Click on the drop down arrow. Click on draw on surface because we want to be able to have it draw on the surface on the mesh. And then click pick. We want to be able to pick the geometry where we want our plane to stick on. So click pick and we want to click on the sphere because we want our plane to stick on that sphere. Now if we go to the drag tool and we drag the points again. Now you could see that it's definitely sticking onto the sphere, but it looks like it's sinking a little too much. So how do we fix that? We gotta go to the offset here. The offset will allow us to adjust the distance between the low poly mesh, which is our plane, and the higher res mesh, which is the sphere. Let's set the offset to 0.1. So now if you go back to the drag and you click and drag onto the points here you can see it's sticking out a little bit more and this is what we want we want it to we want to be able to see the low poly mesh as we are working we don't want it to be sinking inside the high resolution geometry okay and at the same time we don't want too much distance between the low poly mesh and the high poly mesh so let's say that the offset is at a higher value like 0.9 right and if i click and drag Okay, you see how there's way too much, way too much distance here between the low poly mesh and the high poly mesh. So, you gotta go back here to the offset and set it to 0.1. So, this is a value that you have to mess around with as you are retopologizing, okay? Alright, so now the next tool that I want to show you is going to be the Extend tool. This is going to be the tool that we're going to be using a lot here when it comes to retopologizing. Click on Extend, and if you hover your mouse over the edge here, hold the Shift key, click and drag onto an edge. 
So this extend will allow us to extend out the edges. Let's say you want to extend more than one edge at a time. You could hold control shift on your keyboard, control shift together, click, hold and drag onto an edge. So you see how we could create polygons from an entire loop from which an edge resides. What I can also do when I retopologize is I could extend all the way out and then I go use the swift loop, right? So the swift loop, I have it right here. Uh, it's, you could find it in the modeling, the swift loop. We used that before for creating our dagger. And yeah, we could, you could use the swift loop to add some swift loops here, right? And then use going to free form, you could drag the verts. All right. So sometimes under certain circumstances, you might have to do that, extend an entire mesh and then just add more loops as you go. Okay. Add more loops. Okay. So showed you guys how to extend out the edges We're using the extend, right? Extend tool, hold the sh control shift and drag. How do you delete faces? How do you delete polygons? All right. You could hold control, click on a polygon or many you could click delete polygons like that. Okay. Let me just undo. All right. So that's how you delete faces. Control click. Now let's say I want to bridge some edges. Okay. So let's say I want to fill up this hole again. So using the extend tool, you could hold control and alt on your keyboard and you could click and drag from one edge to the next. And this will allow you to create a polygon between two edges. Okay. So that's going to be extend control and alt as you drag. Now you could use the drag tool here to manipulate the vertices, right? But let's say you don't, you only want to stay in the extend tool, right? You don't want to keep on going back and forth between the drag and extend just to be able to move the vertices. So if you go to extend tool, right, you could also move vertices while you're in the extend tool. You could hold control and shift and the alt key, hold all those three keys on your keyboard as you drag. So this will allow you to move the points, move the vertices while you're on the extend tool. Okay. Okay. So there you go. Now another tool, pretty cool, uh, function that the extend tool could do is allowing you to create polygons by clicking and dragging on a vertex. So you have this L shape right there, right? We can create a polygon from that corner. While you're in the extend tool, you could click and drag onto a vertex and create a polygon like that. So click and drag, click and drag. So this is another cool function. I use this a lot when I'm doing the body of the character, with apologizing the body of the character. So that's pretty good to use when you uh, have an L shape there. If you try to do it through here, you see how it gives you a really uh, not a good polygon at all. Control click to delete that. So I could extend this out first and then I could click and drag. So it, it, this is a good tool to use the good function the extend tool if you have an L shape there and then you just want to go ahead and click and drag. Okay, so for the extend, I show you guys how to extend those edges, how to delete faces, how to bridge edges, and how to create a polygon by clicking and dragging on the verts. And by and you could also move the vertices while you're in the extend tool. Okay. Now there's something else I want to show you here. We could see the wires for our polygon here for our low poly mesh, but we could also see the the edges here on the high res mesh and it's kind of annoying seeing the edges here for a high res mesh. We only want to see the edges when we are with topologizing, we only want to see the edges for our low poly mesh. So how do we do that? Okay. Go to the viewport area here. You see edge faces, click on that, go to display selected, and then click 
display selected with edge faces. All right. So now if you press F4 on your keyboard, okay, you are only going to see the edges for whatever polygon you have selected, okay? Because if this is turned off right now, and you press F4 on your keyboard, you see how you're seeing the edges for both? Okay, so I like to keep this turn on and then press F4 to turn off the wires. So you could only see the wires, the edges that's going to be manipulated, okay? Okay, another tool that I want to show you that's within the freeform tab is going to be the step build tool right here, okay? So what the step build does, if you click on the step build, it allows you to create vertices. So let's say I want to start on this area here, I could click, 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 and click. So we have four vertices that we could make a polygon out of. Hold the shift key, click, and drag into the middle. So now we have a polygon created just by creating vertices using step build. And you could also add some more. Hold the shift key and drag. You could even create an entire loop with this. This is a, such a wonderful tool. This is one of my favorite tools here for the freeform tab for topologizing. We could easily create a loop for the eyes, for the mouth using this here. I use this a lot for the face area that requires great precision and accuracy. Okay, so this is a cool tool that you can mess with. Step build. Okay, now let's say that you have some verts, vertices, some edges here that's really funky. Like you have, it's kind of messy, your geometry. And how do you fix this? Okay, you could go and, you know, be a little crazy and just be out of your mind and just <laughs> move things individually, right? Or you could use another tool that will make it easier for you to clean up this mesh, okay? This is when where the conform brush comes in, okay? We're going to be using the conform relax brush a lot when it comes to cleaning up our mesh when we see something that gets a little bit messy like this. So click on relax conform brush and you will see this here pops up, pop up, all right? The full strength is going to be the white circle that you see there. If you crank this up, it will get bigger, the white circle. I usually just leave it at default. I just leave it as the way it is, all right? Not too small. I think it was about this size. And then the fall off here is going to be the black circle that you see on this brush, all right? This is the bigger the fall off is, the more region of polygons that you could paint, okay? So you could, this is, the fall off is what I mess around with a lot when I'm using the conform brush to make it bigger, the influence, all right? And the conform, the conform value is the rate at which the painting deforms the painted object. If you crank up the value for the conform brush, the conforming can take effect instantly. At a lower value, you might have to repeat applications of the brush. Okay, so I'm going to set the, I usually set the conform value to a high, a really high value. So around 50 or more. So for this one, I could set it to 90 and I could start smoothing this out. You see how quickly we could fix this right away with, <laughs> without having to drag each individual points. All right. So yeah, this conform brush is a very cool tool to use. Okay. So I've shown you guys how to use the step build, how to use the extend, how to use the conform relax brush and the drag tool. Those are the important tools that we are going to be using when it comes to retopologizing our character. Now, there are also tools that we're going to be using from the modify tab when it comes to retopologizing. And one of them is going to be the bridge tool. Okay. So let's say that if we go to polygon selection mode, let's say that we have a polygon deleted here and we want to bridge the edges, right? 
Now I showed you guys how to use the extend tool to bridge these, right? But let's say that the extend tool is acting up or being stubborn and we got to find another way to do that. Well, we could do this. Go to edge and select two edges and we could also bridge it through here. Okay. And let's say that you want to extend edges, right? We, I showed you how to extend the edges by using the extend tool. Another way to do that is going to edge selection mode, double click on the edges here. You could hold the shift key on your keyboard as you drag. Okay. And the thing about this though, if you are extruding from here, all right, using the extrude tool, then you, as you could see that it's not sticking onto the mesh. So what you need to do is go back to the drag tool and conform it back in place. Okay. But sometimes we are going to have to use it in certain situations when the freeform tool might not be working in specific areas of our mesh. That's what we're going to have to do. Go into edge selection mode and hold the shift and drag. So in some tight situations, we might have to resort to doing this. Depending on where we are with our mesh, there's some tight spots that we have to do. Then sometimes the extend tool, it's we not working. So we got to use this here, okay? Using, holding the shift key and extruding the edges. Okay, and another tool that I want to show you is going to be the cut tool. If you scroll down here in the modify tab, you're going to see under the edit geometry rollout is the cut tool. This is an important tool that we're also going to be using if we want to fix polygons that have more than four sides. Okay, very efficient tool. Let's go ahead, right click here on this mesh, edge selection mode. So let's say that this here, control backspace to delete that edge. And if I go to vertex selection mode here, okay. Now that I've deleted the edge here, right? This polygon here now has more than four sides. It has one, two, three, four, five, six. Anything that has more than four sides is not good. Okay, it's not. It won't be good for deformation. So end gons, we gotta we gotta fix those. So this is an end gon right here, and this is when the cut tool right here is gonna come in handy. This cut tool allows us to create edges manually wherever we want it. Okay, so let me show you how to use it. Click on the cut tool. Cut tool right here. And then if you hover your mouse over a vertex, you see how it turns into a little crosshair. And if you hover your mouse over an edge, it's a longer crosshair. So it's very important to know whether you're on a vertex or on an edge. Okay. What we're going to do is we could click from vertex to vertex to create the edge back. Okay. If you try to use the swift loop here, you try to use it, it's just not going to work. Okay. All right, see how it's not doing it. So using the cut tool, vertex, vertex, and then when you're done using the cut tool, just right click to exit. Okay. So this is a really good way to get some edges down in the places that you want to. So you could click on a vertex, you could click on an edge, edge and vertex and right click to exit. I want you guys to mess around with this tool because you guys will be using that later on. All right, just go ahead and, you know, play around with this. Okay. See what you could come up with. All right. So you have one, two, three, four sides. And then this polygon has one, two, three, one, two, three. So get also, also get used to knowing whether you have something that has more than four sides or not. So if I go to edge selection mode, if I go ahead and delete these here, right? And if I go to vertex selection mode, you could see that we definitely have end gons here. All right, since I deleted the edges. So you have one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight sides on that polygon there. So now you got to use the cut tool to remedy that polygon there. Right click to exit, click, click, right click to exit. This is very important that you become accurate with this because let's say that you are trying to fix this, right? The stuff that has more than four sides. So let's say I click on the vertex and then I wanted to click on, the, on another vertex, but then I accidentally click on an edge instead. And I right click on the background to exit the tool. So as you can see here, that didn't really fix the problem because I have missed that point right there, okay? So basically this polygon here still has more than four sides. It has one, two, three, four, five sides. So that's still an end gone. So you just gotta make sure that you are very accurate when you're using the cut tool. I want you guys to really practice on this tool right here before it's apologizing. Right click to exit, okay? So I uh, showed you guys how to use the cut tool, which is very important. I showed you guys how to extrude edges, holding the shift key and dragging. All right, so one more time, hold shift and drag, all right? I want you guys to mess around with these tools before with apologizing, all the tools that I showed you. I, wanna, I want you guys to also mess around with the free form, mess around with all these all the wonderful tools there. So go ahead and play around with the tools, have fun, and go ahead and just get your feet wet here. Yeah, try to get your feet wet with this and move some points around, extrude out some edges, okay? Do this here before we get to the nitty-gritty of the tutorial which is finally we're apologizing okay so get used to these so go ahead and practice with all of the tools that i showed you and i will see you guys in the next lecture